Pain below the kneecap? In this video, we'll discuss patellotendinopathy. The diagnosis for patellotendinopathy is relatively straightforward. While tendon pain has classically been thought to be caused by inflammation, which is where we get the term tendonitis, it's actually an overload condition. And so I actually made a video on the difference of tendonitis, tendinosis, and tendinopathy, and what actually causes tendon pain. So I'll leave a link over here. But for the purpose of this video, we'll keep it simple in saying that for an overload condition, the loads that are being placed on the tendon exceeds what it can tolerate, and that's leading to the pain. The pain with patellar tendinopathy occurs right at the patellar tendon, which is located just underneath the kneecap, and it's worse with loading activities. So activities could be like lunges, squats, running, or jumping. Those will typically all reproduce the symptoms. Clinically, the test that we'll use to determine if somebody has patellar tendinopathy or not is a single leg squat, and sometimes this will be done on a slant board, so your heels will be elevated, and we'll perform some single leg squats to see if it reproduces those symptoms right below the kneecap. Imaging, like an ultrasound or an MRI, typically aren't needed for the diagnosis of patellar tendinopathy. And this is because treatment doesn't really change much depending on those structural changes that we'll see on imaging. In fact, some of those structural changes that we see occur in those without patellar tendinopathy, so without pain, and those structural changes don't actually need to change for you to have a good outcome. So those structural changes that we'll see don't really influence how we're going to approach things. We're going to still approach the treatment of patellotendinopathy with a progressive rehab program depending on the tolerance to load. Isometric exercises, which are where the muscle contracts but the joint actually doesn't move, have become a popular treatment option for patellotendinopathy. And this is because there was research by Ebony Rio which found that heavy isometric exercises substantially reduce the pain with patellotendinopathy. And while this was promising, it might have been a little bit too good to be true. In repeat studies, they actually found that isometric exercises didn't actually perform any better than concentric and eccentric muscle contractions. And the response to isometric contractions was pretty variable. Some people had a large reduction in pain and some people actually got a little bit worse with those isometric contractions. And because of this information, isometric exercises are actually optional in the rehab for patellotendinopathy. For those that are really sensitive to load, then isometric exercises are a useful place to start. Or if someone's really hesitant to start loading the patellar tendon, then we can start with isometric exercises because we have a lot more control over the specific range that we're loading the patellar tendon in, and also how much we're loading the patellar tendon. If we want to perform isometric contractions, then there are multiple ways that we can do this. The most easy way is to do a knee extension, either using a knee extension machine or an exercise band wrapped around the feet and holding the knee extension at about 60 degrees of flexion. Another way to do this if we don't have that equipment is either using a couch or some pillows to extend the leg against a little bit of resistance. Generally for the isometric contractions, we wanna hold them for 30 to 45 seconds and repeat for four to five repetitions. And then there's the Spanish squat, which is another popular exercise for patellotendinopathy. And this is a heavy isometric muscle contraction for both the quads as well as the patellar tendon. It's different than a wall sit because in a wall sit, you can actually use the wall for a little bit of support. In the Spanish squat, there's nothing underneath the hips, so there's just a lot more load on both the quads and the patellar tendon. And the challenging thing about this exercise is the setup as well as the equipment because you need a really thick band to actually be able to support yourself. So this is a great exercise because it does load the patellar tendon and the quads pretty heavy. However, it's not necessary if you don't have the equipment because there's other ways that you can load that patellar tendon. For majority of people with patellar tendinopathy, they can start off with concentric and eccentric exercises. And there are a variety of different ways that we can load the patellar tendon in this stage. Some of this will depend on the equipment that's available to the person as well as their comfort with doing some of the exercises. Additionally, it does seem that some people respond better to various ways of loading the patellar tendon. So if you've been doing one exercise for a while and it doesn't seem to be responding, then pick a different exercise and see how you respond to that way of loading. The most simple exercise would be a knee extension, either using a knee extension machine at the gym or using a heavy exercise band. When performing these, time under tension does seem to play a big role with this. So we wanna perform each of these contractions over six to eight seconds. So that would be three to four seconds with the concentric phase where we're contracting the quads and extending the knee. And then three to four seconds when we're relaxing the quads and slowly bringing our leg back to that original starting position. Another option is an elevated split squat. And I like this exercise a lot because we can make some subtle tweaks to our technique to affect how much we're loading that patellar tendon. So the more upright our torso is, the less load we're actually going to be placing on that patellar tendon. So the progression could be that we start to lean over that lead leg a little bit and shift our weight over that front foot. That will increase the load that we're putting on the patellar tendon. Additionally, we can add some load to this exercise by using a kettlebell or a backpack 
to just increase the challenge of this exercise. Squats can also be used here, and there are a lot of variations that we can actually use. We might start off with a basic squat with our feet on the ground or with our heels elevated on a slant board and perform these squats slowly. So they'll be performed over six to eight seconds. Again, that's three to four seconds down and then three to four seconds back up. And then the progression here is pretty easy. We can transition into a single leg squat and balance can be a little bit of an issue here. So if we need to, we can use either a chair or a wall to provide ourselves a little bit of support. So that way we're focusing more on the muscle contraction and performing them slowly than we are on the balance. Although it's always good to actually have an exercise to help with balance as well. The last progression is plyometrics and this is to build tolerance to faster loading of the patellar tendon. And the specific exercise that we pick for the plyometric exercise really depends on the sport that we're trying to return back to. For example, running doesn't require a whole lot of range of motion in the lower extremity. So performing something like a bunny hop is probably sufficient in terms of the range of motion that we're loading in. And of course we want to progress the bunny hop from a double leg bunny hop to a single leg bunny hop because that's actually going to match more of the load as well as that range of motion. Another great exercise option here is jump roping. And while this might seem very similar to the bunny hops that we just performed, the rope actually does serve a purpose here. When we look at a lot of rehab programs, you get to pick your own pace so you can start, stop, speed up, slow down whenever you feel like it. But with the rope, there's actually a little bit of rhythm there. So it'll make you jump a little bit more consecutively. And also it'll make you jump sometimes when you're not prepared to, which is more similar to what you're going to experience when we turn back to sport. And if jump roping isn't your thing, you can actually perform all the exercise to a metronome, which is called tendon neuroplastic training. And so for example, you might jump on every second or third beat. So that way you're having to go to a rhythm and not just whenever you feel prepared to jump. For sports that require jumping, there's going to be a little bit more range of motion in that lower extremity. So we might still start off with those bunny hops, but we want to progress to something like a squat jump where we're going through a larger range of motion. And then again, we can further increase the load on the quads and the patellar tendon by then transitioning from a squat jump to a single leg squat jump. And then some sports also include quick changes of direction. So not only do we want to include vertical jumps, but we might want to include some side to side hops as well, as well as some jumps with some rotation. So that way we're exposed to a variety of different movements. So hopefully this video on patellar tendinopathy was helpful. If you made it this far in the video, do me a big favor and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.